What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Review Space and today on Versus we pit two Tekken fighting games on the PSP. Which Tekken game is the best on the PlayStation Portable? Alright, yes, yeah, so, well now we're going to compare Tekken Dark Resurrection against Tekken 6. Awesome. I mean look at this. First of all, let's check out the, uh, the casing and the cover. Both have a certain look to them. Wait a minute, let me just get some better lighting here. This was the greatest hit version, though, of Tekken Dark Resurrection. And it's got uh, Jin Kazama on the uh, cover. Cover art right there. And Devil Jin, of course. And uh, the actual backdrop is inside the cathedral, but it's like the... I don't know, the snowbound version, I guess, because the stage designs are basically Tekken 5 on the PS2, um, but just, like, alternate versions, I guess. Like, and so, like, the nighttime stages and the daytime stages are in reverse. So, for example, if a stage used to be nighttime, then it's daytime in this game, and vice versa. The power of the greatest fighting dynasty in the palm of your hand. Tekken Dark Resurrection has arrived in the PSP. Fight with new characters Lily and Dragonov. Her other favorites including Jin, Heihachi, and Armor King. Who isn't to be found in Tekken 5 by the way. It has wireless ad hoc with up to two players. Customize uh, characters with twice the items I guess in reference to Tekken 5. And share your creation using the ghost feature. Play mini games in ad hoc or individually for a change in the action. Stunning graphics on 19 stages of pain. It actually won the IGN Best Overall Fighting Game of the Year in 2006 and the Best PSP Fighting Game of uh, the Year in 2006. GameSpot Editor's Choice Award. And this game uh, did come out in uh, 2006. So that's Tekken Dark Resurrection. Obviously, we'll get to the gameplay a little bit later, but let's open up the thing. On the inside, it's got the manual right here. Man, this thing is really narrow. Oh my gosh! Well, in the back, there's Naruto uh, Ultimate Ninja Heroes uh, commercial on the PSP. A little ad, promo, whatever. Oh, is it all in black and white? Oh, okay. It's all in black and white. Okay, whatever. Not really interesting. Yeah, it's got a little storyline thing. Um, yeah, it's basic manual there, black and white. And there is the disc, or the UMD. With Lily and Dragonov on the, um, on the disc cover, or what, what do you call that? The artwork? Yeah. Just to showcase the new characters included in this game. So, what are we waiting for? Let's actually go play some Tekken Dark Resurrection. Bandai Namco. Hope y'all can hear that properly. Oh, the intro. Awesome. Ah, oh, it's Jinpachi. Oh, here we go. Lily. She gets kidnapped somehow. All right, enough of the intro. I just I don't want to waste enough time. All right. So basically, you have uh, the general fighting modes. You got quick battle, story battle, arcade, network, Tekken Dojo, which is basically like this ranking system. Attack. Oh yeah, that's like some sort of. Uh, mm, not quite training, but it's some sort of thing where you uh, you have to attack, uh, almost like an instruction kind of thing. Practice mode, of course. Bonus games. Oh, bonus games even include Tekken Ball and Command Attack. You get that a little bit later. You can unlock those. Um, you know, this game is actually pretty badass. This is my favorite fighting game uh, on the handheld, I think. This might even be better than Killer Instinct on the Game Boy. I love this game. Check out the options. You can toggle the difficulty, toggle the rounds, all that stuff. And this game is just so awesome. You can save the game 
there's also an auto save feature, but I don't, I don't like auto save. I think it sucks. You know, it, I don't know. My corrupt uh, corrupt the disc. So let's go with I don't know. Let's go with arcade battle, I guess. I mean, the graphics look great, first of all. There's a lot of characters to choose from right here. I mean, this is about how many people is in this? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well over 30 characters, so that's a wide selection. And they're all already unlocked, by the way, so that's kind of cool. When you start it up, you don't have to... It's not that bullshit with Tekken 5 on the PS2 or, you know, pretty much any Tekken game. Like, before Tekken Dark Resurrection, you had to unlock every character. Well, except for Tekken Tag Tournament, I guess. But, like, with Tekken 4, you have to unlock everybody, you know what I mean? You had to always unlock people. This one, everybody's already uh, unlocked. Let's see, uh, let's go with... I mean, I don't even know who to choose. Um... Let's go with Kazuya then, alright. Kazuya Mishima. Get ready for the next battle. The audio is really loud and crisp. The announcer's voice, man, I mean, it's just great. Let's do this. Ah. Uh, so you've come. Let's go. Final Let's go. Fight. I love your little accents. Like, okay, a guy's Chinese, so if I have, like, this fob accent, this Chinese accent or something. But realistically, they would they should be speaking in, like, Cantonese or Mandarin or something. Because a lot of the characters speak in Japanese, like the Japanese fighters. Kazuya, he speaks in Japanese. I guess the idea is that Lei Wulong is, um... I don't know, he's supposed to be Americanized or something? Get ready for the, next battle. the thing that sucks though, like when it comes to the language, I've always had a problem with Tekken when it comes to the actual language they speak. Don't, don't you think? Fight. Lily's a cunt. But I like her. No, I mean like with the other characters like uh, Christy Montero or Eddie, they don't speak Portuguese. Um. So, you know, that's what sucks about it, is that they don't speak their native language. Some of them do, but not all of them. I don't know if Namco is just, like, willing to do it and go all the way with these fucking characters. Because, I mean, you had a game like Fighter's History, which came up for the Super Nintendo way back in the day, and they spoke their native language. So I'm basically just showing you the graphics and the fighting mechanics and... You know, basic gameplay. You guys had no haven't noticed um the characters don't really look exactly like their artwork. You know, their official costumes or default costumes. You can customize them. So Eddie here, for example, has a bright blue glow, which is basically an aura. The aura you can buy in a store. In the customization menu. Ah, oh, shit. Son of a. F okay, so that's enough of that. Enough of the arcade mode. Right. I mean, the audio was great. This is one of the best soundtracks. Um, actually, Tekken Five specifically, but this one's really good too. Can you actually check out the audio? Stage effects volume. Oh, I think you can. Alright, let's go with story mode. A story battle. I'll show you guys uh, how they present the storyline. Let's go, hold on. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. That's the brightest I can. Okay. That's the brightest it can go. Let's go with somebody like... Let's go with Bruce then. Yeah? Bruce Irvin, okay. Bruce Irvin. Bruce 
Han so mercenary for Kazuya. Bruce left Kazuya's militia 21 years ago. 21 years ago. So it ba this is basically just a way to show uh, a certain backstory for each character. They're presented in these 2D uh, animated uh, pictures and a commentary. And you can skip the thing. Really, the only reason for story mode is to check out the little cutscenes at the end, and you can unlock some money too. Once you beat a story mode for the first time, you earn a certain amount of cash. Which goes into your customization thing. You can customize and, and buy items. Oh shit, here we go. Oh. That was easy. Muay Thai Master. What the fuck you know about that, bitch? Yeah. Final round. Fight. The graphics look absolutely phenomenal. You can see the stage design here. There's a helicopter in the background and shit. Uh, this particular stage is what you call a never-ending stage. It doesn't have a uh, doesn't have any walls that limit your thing. Some stages are, uh, they're walled up, so there's basically an enclosed space, so eventually you'll hit, hit a wall, and that kind of limits the, uh, it, it just fucks up your, your combo sometimes, because you hit your opponent against a wall. Like this one is a, yeah, this is an example of a closed off stage, with walls and shit, so you're basically limited to a certain amount of space, it, it's never, it's not never ending. Hold on, I just want to get as close to the wall as possible. Like, see, just like that. And then you can see Yoshimitsu trying to fly over and just doesn't quite make it. Oh, shit. Boom, it's over. Love the stage designs. Again, these are alternate versions of Tekken 5 on the PS2. Slash Arcade, you know, the original game. Um, the Dark Resurrection, it's basically, I don't know, uh, a, an expanded version of Tekken 5? Like a remix version, I guess? Oh, Steve, you son of a... Look at that. Serve this, man. I mean, look at that. This guy doesn't stand a chance. I like Steve, though. He's pretty badass. Yeah. It's over. This guy is strong. Alright, so basically that's... Okay, shut the fuck up for a second. Okay, it gets annoying when the audio is a little too loud. So basically that's my example of the story mode. Um, you see these little, you know, small little uh, cutscenes and shit? Wait a minute. It's very minimal. Um... You know, it's like very limited dialogue between the characters, but it does show a little bit of interaction between uh, these characters. It's really not enough. You know, I feel that it's just kind of, uh, it's almost like small talk between the, these fucking characters. Um, you know, uh, this character will ha say something to the other one and it doesn't even really matter. Because the story is very convoluted and it, it's very irrelevant. A lot of the characters don't matter, really, in this game. I mean, they don't have any consequence consequential endgame to their story. They just kind of exist in this world. Let's go to the practice mode. 
let's go with yeah, fucking freestyle, whatever. Who cares? All right, let's practice with somebody like. I was thinking of somebody like Eddie. Okay, Eddie's cool. Practice against. Yeah, let's go with Christy. Stage wall off. It's really annoying. Fuck the wall. Christy is fucking eye candy. I mean, she's just complete fan service. All right. So you got the master on the left and bitch ass Christy on the right, but they're both cool. I mean, they both got the capoeira thing. Um, it's cool to have a female capoeirist practitioner, whatever. She's really cool, but Eddie's always like the best. Like he's the most popular guy. Probably the most underutilized character in fucking fighting game history. He's so popular in the States and North America. But they don't fucking do anything with his character. Um, as you can see here, this is basically the training room. Very different from Tekken 5. Tekken 5, you can choose any fucking stage. Like the actual fighting game stages. But here, it's just this generic, closed off, weird room. You know, with the lines and shit. I mean, I don't know. I think it's a little too dark. But this is where you get to basically practice your character's moves and shit. Which is always helpful, but it's just, I mean... You're gonna have to spend a lot of time here if you want to master these fucking characters. I mean, that's what a fighting game is for. You fucking pick one character that you like, and then you try your best to fucking master it and you know like look at the command list there's a lot of different moves and shit in the fucking thing like 149 different little command commands available that's a lot of moves so you gotta really like um experience the character you gotta keep playing as eddie you know if you want to master him and just at least get to understand the gameplay it's all about each character's individual fighting style so Eddie's Capoeira, you gotta sort of master how he plays and his combos and everything. I'm just mashing buttons here. I don't know jack shit because I'm not very good with Eddie, but like the juggling shit, you gotta know which proper fucking juggles to perform. Ugh, Jesus. Anyway, that's practice mode. Uh, anything else? Um... Oh yeah, Tekken Dojo. Yeah, that's just a ranking system. So you basically fight progressively harder enemies and rank up. Um, so you earn, you know, titles and shit like that. Um, the bonus game has Tekken Bowl, just like Tekken Tag Tournament. I, I spent a lot of time with Tekken Bowl, actually. It's fucking awesome. It's bowling. I mean, I love that shit. Alright, let's go with... Uh, Go with Nina. Cause she's fun. Freaking assassin. Nina Williams. And really it does operate exactly like Tech and Tech Tournament uh, bowling segment. Yeah. I love it though. You got like dancing chicks uh, around you in swimsuits and stuff. Even though it's the same exact woman. There's only like three different kinds. There's the chick with the afro. There's this chick in this bathing suit, black bathing suit, and then there's this chick kind of gyrating, and then there's one chick like kind of egging them on. So there's only like four different girl sprites. Oh, look at that strike, bitch. Yeah. It's a little tricky at first, but you get the hang of it. Mmm. Sexy. I don't know, Nina's pretty hot for like a fucking 40-year-old woman. And a mother. She's, she's a MILF, man. She gave birth to Steve Fox. Fucking weird. They probably like impregnated her inside a laboratory. It's so fucking weird, man. Ugh. Anyway, this is Tekken Bowling. It's really fun. I keep doing this. Uh, 
arguably the best part of this fucking game, to be honest. Well, one of the best. It's really fun. I wouldn't even, like, play the fighting, like, Tekken Dojo. I spent probably more time with the with the bowling segments. Um, yeah, you could edit your profile, I guess. Where the hell is it? Yo. Where the fuck is the thing? Oh, come on. So my name is Grax. I know, it's kind of stupid, but let's just... Yeah, that was fucking dumb. Um... Yeah, you can customize your characters. Let's go with, uh, let's go with Devil Jin. If you have enough money, that is. Um, a lot of these items though are expensive, so you you need a lot of fucking money. And I, I guess the idea of the the game is to keep playing it and playing it, so that you're always spending money on new items. So it just keeps going like a fucking loop, a never ending game, I guess. You can buy all kinds of shit, like this massive horn here for fucking Devil Jin right here. You can see he's... I colored him uh, blue. Because it looks good. Upper bodies and shit, you can give him spikes like that. Bat wings. But some of the items are just not that great, you know, they're sort of irrelevant. Like, buy a new hat for... Julia Chang, you know, or buy a fucking... A small tattoo that you can barely see, you know, for Bruce Irving, you know, it's just kind of hit or miss. Realistically, you can only have a certain limited amount of look in the customization. I guess the idea is to freshen up your character's look and, you know, so that they're not always redundant. They don't have the same look all the time because you're playing a lot of these, uh, you know, you want to keep playing it over and over again with the same characters. It gets kind of boring with the same look, so the problem is that, yeah, I mean, it's just, they don't have a lot of items, though. They don't have a lot of variety. It's the same basic pants, the same fucking outfits, the same, you know, I mean, it's cool to have a mask like this for Jin, for example, but that's about it. You know what I mean? He's got a little helmet, then you can give him a barbarian helmet, you can give him longhorns, a fucking dragon helmet. The face, you can give him... Ears, underworld ears, which fucking elf ears. I mean, it's like, that's about it. You don't get that many options. So... Anyway, overall, this game is fucking phenomenal, though. Like, no joke, this is one of the best fighting games on the PSP. Graphics are phenomenal. Great audio soundtrack. Uh, I mean, what more can I say? This is one of the best games on the PlayStation Portable. Um, one of the best fighters. The controls are very, very tight, very responsive. All right, so now let's take a look at Tekken Six for, of course, the PSP again, and it's again it's rated T. The actual cover features more characters than just Jin in the Dark Resurrection. You got Kazuya, now the poster boy or cover boy, whatever. Actually, all three uh, members of the family: Heihachi and Jin. You got Nina, I guess. I don't know for female presence, token girl, um, and she's a uh, she's a you know veteran. She's a long time uh, Tekken original, and then you have King as well another recognizable character and on the back this is your fight oh god fuck that fucking phone hold on fuck the phone yo fuck the phone shut the fuck up fuck the phone This time around, you have 40 characters, man, wireless battle, over 18 plus stages. I don't even know what the hell that means. 18 plus? Like, there's 18 and a half stages or something. You can customize the thing and all that. Most impressive we've seen on the PSP yet, according to GameSpot. This one came out in 2009. Apparently, there's some alcohol references and crude humor and suggested themes. Oh, give me a break. Tekken is so tame, it's not even... Hey, uh, come on, man. Alright, let's open up the thing. 
All right, the instructions. Let me guess. It's in black and white too. Hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's yeah. It's it's not even in color. What the hell happened to manuals, man? They used to be at least colorful. I mean, now they're just the blandest, grayest-looking things. They're terrible. Ugh. What's the point? Oh, in the back you have, uh, oh, we got Soul Calibur Broken Destiny as the promo, but I'll probably review that some other time. And there you have uh, the Tekken 6 UMD disc. Alright, what are we waiting for? Let's play the song, bitch. Bum, ch -ch bum, bum, ch -ch -ch bum. Yo, it's the PSP coming up in the freaking scene. Y'all know what it is, y'all know what I mean. Ah, put it down every single time. I'll be hitting a ram on the microphone. Yep, I'm about to flip it because my style is so wicked. Every time I'm about to hit it because you know I'm about to kick it. Like my name was a Tekken character. Straight damage ya. Oh, come on. They always have to do that stupid crap. Oh, the Tekken is saving. Don't turn the system off. Shut up. Oh yeah, you got the little cutscene and shit. Yeah. Well, I don't know, it's kind of a shame. I mean, it's a shame I sold the PS3 version of this game. There's a lot of differences, but a lot of similarities too. It's essentially the same game, but... Like, the cutscenes are lower resolution and shit. But it still looks really good. Yeah, it looks fat. It looks absolutely great, though. Yeah. Very detailed and everything. Alright, so, fuck the storyline, because it's so convoluted anyway. 2009, so about, uh, what, three years apart from uh, Dark Resurrection? Alright, so the layout is almost identical. You got the same fucking choices and shit. You don't have short battle, though. I noticed that. And you don't have the bonus games. You don't have, uh... Second bowling in this one, which kind of sucks. You got arcade battle, story mode, ghost battle, challenge battle, which is basically uh oh yeah, time attack, gold rush and shit. Gold rush is a basically a, a good way to earn a lot of money. It's sort of like uh, yeah, earn extra cash so you're not always fucking struggling when it comes to well, you're still struggling, but it's a way to earn faster money. For customization, you can hook it up online, battle online, practice mode, customize your shit, gallery for the uh, cutscenes that you've unlocked, and everything like that. All right, so let's begin with let's begin with fucking arcade. Why not? It sucks. It doesn't have Tekken bowling or anything. Yeah, this game doesn't really have a lot of extras at all, to be honest. You got a couple of new characters, well, a few new characters. Zafina, fucking Bob, fat-ass Bob. You got Leo, which is basically a guy-looking female. Or a female-looking guy. Uh, you also have uh, Elisa, a robot, and Lars, a... I don't know, a genetic pseudo-clone of Kazia. I don't fucking get this guy. Initially, I hated the new characters. Like, these guys just fucking suck. Like, every single... Miguel, Spanish guy. But, uh, they actually grew on me a little bit. I thought they were kind of cool. I mean, Miguel kind of sucks. Zafina, I'm not a big fan of her, but... I guess they're alright, you know. They're really not... Alisa's pretty cool. She's a fucking weird ass robot. Let's go with Alisa. Get ready for the next time. She reminds me of like a character from Chobits or something. Just a female robot. It kicks a lot of ass, but she's got like this innocent fucking bubbly kind of schoolgirl thing going. I don't know. Oh shit, I love the pigtails. Take that bitch. 
Oh yeah! This stage is so fucking dark, so... Okay. I was gonna pause and show off the fucking stage design, but it's actually not... It's not one of the worst stages, but it's not that great looking either. It's actually very... I don't know. It's kind of generic. I mean, I like the, the whole fucking... The water splashing and shit. It's very realistic looking. Like, the graphics are good for a PSP. Um, PSP design, but I don't know. Oh shit. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that Alisa speaks in Japanese. She doesn't speak English, even though she's, I guess, more white-looking than Asian-looking. I don't know. Made in Japan, I guess. Oh shit, a ranking match. Check out the music, it's really good. See you next week, bitch. And she flies away. Ah, uh, that's awesome. So if you had to notice, that stage was very dark too. It was like stormy and it's on a helipad or something. Ugh, we shall on. Take that, bitch. Oh yeah, it's over. I'm not even serious with this. This is so freaking basic. Boom. KO. It kind of sucks they don't have the replay thing. I kind of missed that from Tekken Dark Resurrection. Alright, we got Zafina, this freaking fan service chick. I mean, she's supposed to be sexy, I guess, but... I don't even get her. I don't even know where she's from. What's her culture? Is she a gypsy or what? What the fuck is she? Romanian? I don't get it. Middle Eastern? Oh. Oh yeah, there's breakable, like, floors and shit. Kind of like, you know, Mortal Kombat. But fighting games have been doing that for years, like, since the 90s. Multi-leveled -level floors and shit. And it's only, like, Tekken only added it in 2007, 2009, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so this, the stage design was pretty shitty, you know, that was like, what the fuck was that? It was all dark and shit, like... What was that? Oh shit. I like the stage. It's so fucking random though. Like you got flying airplanes overhead. Or jet planes. I don't fucking get this level. Oh. Oh yeah, 15,000 yetch. Alright, so I've had enough of uh, arcade mode. Let's get the fuck out of here. Alright. So the main problem, as you can see, is that the stage designs aren't really that great. They're not as good as Dark Resurrection or Tekken 5. They're not as eye-catching. They're not as original. They're just kind of either really random or 
really dark and crappy looking. You know, they look like shit. The music isn't that amazing. I mean, some of the music is okay, but most of it is just not that great. So the stage designs themselves aren't outstanding. Not as good as Dark Resurrection. Gameplay-wise, let's go with uh, let's go with practice. Okay. All right, let's go. Fuck, Jesus fucking Christ! I hate it when it, it just takes takes forever to load. Uh, Frank Mardik's pretty badass. Let's go with him. Again, badass Bob. Stage wall off. Look at this shit. It's, it looks exactly the fucking same. And yeah, the practice room is exactly like it used to look like. Hurry up, you loading fuck! Jesus Christ! Oh my god, look at this. It's been like 20 seconds. Alright. Looks exactly the same, or pretty much. It's not even... No, it's actually drabbier looking. It's like gray. In Dark Resurrection, it was a little bit kind of green. Ugh. So, essentially, this is very similar to Dark Resurrection's uh, fighting style. Like, the characters have almost the same amount of moves. But they have this brand new thing called, fuck, I call it takedown attacks. Or, uh, I call it dribbling. So, essentially, actually, I think uh, Craig Mardik is a bad character choice because, uh, I like him as a character, I just can't really uh, dribble as the character. Who's a guy who can dribble? Let's see. Oh, let's go with Kazuya. Where's Kazuya at? Where's Kazuya? Kazuya against Lily. Even this thing here, this versus screen is just not as good as uh, Dark Resurrection. It looks very plain and kind of boring. So, I mean, it's like a... Alright, so... Boom! So I just knocked the bitch down. That knock... That dribbling move where I fucking knock her on the floor and then she bounces up. I call that dribbling. It's basically the counterpart to juggling. Juggling is just you knock them in the air and then you keep attacking them in mid-air like that. Okay? That's the basic concept of fucking juggling. Juggle. Oh wait. Juggle. 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 So that's your basic juggling move, but dribbling is actually more more of the same, really, but the idea is that you knock them on the floor instead, so... Knock on the floor, finish them with a combo. Whoops. Let's try that again. Knock them on the floor. Oh, son of a bitch, come on, you fuck. Hold on. Knock them on the floor and finish them with a... Fucking combo, if this fucking game allows me. Alright, you guys get the fucking point here. <laughs> There you go. I don't know. That was... That's your general knockdown combo here. Dribble and... Alright, so let me fucking try to dribble this bitch right here. Boom! So that was a 7 hit combo, very simplistic. Boom. So essentially what you can do is you knock them on the ground and then they bounce up and then you can keep de uh, dealing damage to them like you would in a fucking juggle. There you go. That kind of thing. And that's pretty much like the main difference between uh, this and previous Tekken games is that the previous ones don't have dribbling combos like that. Every single character pretty much has a dribbling 
combo starter. And anything else? I mean, the gallery, you can watch their little cutscenes and shit. So, for example, let's check out the ending to... Uh, let's go with uh, Devil Jin, for example. The pre-rendered cutscenes aren't very long. And really, they're not as good as Dark Resurrection. Dark Resurrection seems to focus more on the actual characters and their backstories. But, you know, they're a little bit longer. Um, it seems like they put more time and effort in making them. With uh, Tekken 6, they're very short. Most of them, uh, Devil Jin is a little bit longer, but it's just not that great. Like this one here, it's really boring. Kazuya, the same thing, and uh, all these other characters uh, just feels uninspired, you know? It just feels like they took a lot less time making the little cutscenes. Um, it's like they put less effort in the actual presentation of the game, unfortunately. So the stage designs suck compared to Tekken Dark Resurrection. The music's not as good. The fighting mechanics is very similar, so I gotta give that a, th you know, that's a plus, that's a better thing, but it doesn't even have, like, Tekken bowling or anything. It doesn't even have that extra spice that makes it, you know, the, the replay value gets bumped up a little bit. This is a very bare-bones port of Tekken 6. You know, it's not really that impressive, um, unfortunately, so... I don't know. This one doesn't even have a ranking thing. It doesn't even have uh, the Tekken Dojo. Kind of sucks. Right, let's check out Horang's storyline. Horang succeeded in defeating Jin in Tekken 5, basically. <sighs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus Christ. Get ready for the next battle. Oh shit, it's Steve. Let's go, Steve. Hurry up, man. Fuck these loading times, man. Oh shit. Music is awesome in this stage, though. I love the fucking uh, electric fountain stage. Very good music. Oh. Oh, you fuck. And it's a pretty cool looking stage too. But that's yeah, that's a rare exception. Like this stage is one of the rare ones that's actually kind of cool. Most of the stage designs are just really uninteresting. Like this one here. This this stage is the most overused stage in the fucking world. I don't know. Because if you want to make a lot of money, ideally, you play, let's see, you play the Gold Rush. Okay, now the Gold Rush basically allows you to earn a lot of money depending on how much you get hit and how much you can hit your fucking opponent. The main problem, there's only one stage in the whole fucking thing. You only use one stage the whole time. What stage would that be? The fucking stage that we just went to we were recently at the one that we just when I fucking quit basically the casino thing or uh, yeah the casino looking stage this thing Ugh. this stage is so repetitive it's the same fucking stage all the time so you keep going it's always the same one 
so it gets very redundant and very repetitive. It's the same aesthetic. And while the stage itself isn't really that, you know, it's not bad, it's actually kind of cool looking at first, but once you fucking play in the stage all the time, every single time, And really, this is the best way to make money. This is usually better than spending an hour trying to do a arcade mode. Because you earn a certain amount of cash here. Watch this. Well, fuck it. Let's try the next one. It's exactly the same stage, and that's the biggest problem I have. So it gets really tiresome on the eyes. It gets really redundant. and not. It doesn't help when this stage, this casino stage appears in every like occasionally in the regular modes like arcade mode and stuff so you'll see this hundreds and hundreds of times if you keep playing gold rush which is the best way to make money but uh, you know so that's kind of shitty that this is like the designated area why can't this just be normal arcade style like the stages actually have variety. It's not. It's always this fucking level. That oh, this is ridiculous. Anyway, I gotta exit this. Fuck this. Yeah, I'm out of here. Uh. And really, I think that should be it. I mean, there's not much else I can say. Um. There's a lot of characters. Again, there's like forty characters or something like that, but. I don't know. I also don't like how the, in the actual gameplay some characters have different moves too. Like they changed um, fucking Craig Marduk. They took out some of his moves, they took out Bruce Irving's moves and replaced it with other moves so it's like the gameplay gets a little bit fucked up. Like I'm sort of used to playing the character a certain way, a certain move set that they have, and then they switch it around, and then now it's like all fucked up. If you can pick either one and you don't mind a really good fighting game, then either choice is good. I mean, both games are really good gameplay-wise and control-wise. You know, the fighting engine is great. It's that classic Tekken, very fast-paced. Tekken 6, it's got more combos. Dark Resurrection is really good, too. Especially visually and gameplay and sound. With Tekken 6, not so much. So it's like there's sort of a almost a trade-off kind of thing. And there's more characters in Tekken 6, so that's sort of a plus there. I guess it just depends on which Tekken you like more. If I had to choose between these two though, honestly, i go with Dark Resurrection. It's got the Tekken bowling and it's got enough characters to last you you know, uh, years really to, to master and just complete it. It's very challenging. I like the whole Tekken Dojo thing. Uh, better CGI cutscenes, better music, better stage designs. It's just a better game. Tekken 6 looks good as far as technically, like as far as smoother looking characters a little bit, but it's still... If you want the perfect version of Tekken 6, probably get, get it on the PS3, I guess. The full version. Oh, uh, it's actually missing uh, the actual. What do you call it? The fucking the Bloodline Rebellion, I guess, mode where it's kind of like a beat 'em up. It's missing that. It doesn't have that. I don't know. It's a, it's a really good port though. It's a very strong fighting game. It's just. Is it worth it compared to Tekken Dark Resurrection? I don't think so. I'd say Dark Resurrection is overall still the best fighting game on the PSP.